Coming up on wheels, a one-family 1979 Chevy pickup. Well, here we are. This is the second episode of Wheels in Motion, and we're out here today with Cody's 79 Chevy truck. Yeah, this is where we get into this is where we get into the survivors that we've talked about in this pickup. Of course, you're going to hear about it as we're driving it. It's definitely a survivor. And you're going to see an awful lot more of these kind of vehicles in here. So uh, hang out, take a ride in my old Chevy here. It's an old friend of mine. I mentioned that in there. But take a look and let us know your feedback. We want to know, as the show evolves, we really want your feedback. And we want to know what you want to see, whether you want to see more survivors, whether you want to see more muscle cars or hot rods or even big rigs. Let us know. And if you have something in the Northern California, Northern Nevada area, we want to know. We want to hear from you. Today we're driving around in a very nice Survivor 78, 79, 9, 79. Chevy Silver R Scottsdale. Truck. And there's, you know, it's funny if you if you really study these square body Chevys, there's some, some very subtle changes between the 78 and the 79 model year. Yeah. And in this particular year, you get the little character line at the front of the hood, and you get the fuel doors instead of just having the turn screw cap on the outside of the bed. On the bed. Yeah. And they were really nice touches. They made them really nice. This little pickup is a great survivor. And it's, to me, it's what I call an old friend because I've had this since 1990, since I had my learner's permit. This was my great grandfather's pickup, Frank Kinsley. And that's why we call the truck Frank now. And when he passed away, he was my grandmother's dad. Then it became mine, and it's been mine ever since, and it always will be, or at least in my family. If it ever goes anywhere, it'll wind up going to my nephews, probably, because I don't have any kids. But it's a it's a great example of what you can do with a Survivor. It's daily driver reliable, and I would hop in this pickup and drive it to San Francisco tomorrow without even thinking twice about it. And uh, it's really nice. It's never left me on the side of the road. I've had nearly new vehicles leave me on the side of the road, yeah. but this never has. It's it's had its issues, don't get me wrong. It's eaten, you know, in typical late 70s small block Chevy form, it's eaten two cams, uh, but I keep really good high zinc oil in it now, yeah. and it seems to be holding together really well. well. It's just a basic 350 four barrel turbo 350. Yeah, pretty much the 307 gear. Standard truck. Yeah. yeah, it's really good mileage with that long gear. Plus, there isn't, in between my house and town, which is about 10 minutes to South Reno, it's a uh, 50 mile an hour speed zone. So you're really not spinning it that much. Yeah. So it works out really nice. But it's original right down to its hubcaps and the original wheels. I still have the original spare in the bed. I wouldn't put it on, but it's in there. Still, and it there. still holds air. Bias ply, everything. Wow. And this pickup I found, I was underneath the dash working on a, a rattle under there, and I actually found the build sheet and found out it was originally delivered to a Chevrolet dealer in Roseburg, Oregon, and it got dealer traded, this is a funny story, dealer traded to Garrity Chevrolet in Junction City, Oregon, because my uh, uncle who was running Garrity Chevrolet had a brand new loaded to the gills power everything, air conditioning, blue and white Silverado sitting out, 
and my great granddad walked in, took a look at it, and said, I don't want any of that stuff. I want a rubber floor mat, I want roll up windows, and I don't want air conditioning. And so they had a dealer trade for this. So it's, this is about as base as you're going to find, just about. Which it's is cool. I mean, that's the neat thing about it. It really is. But these are such great pickups because there's so much leg room in them. You can stretch out. We're both six foot two, and, and we're yeah, both stretched we out. And, and uh, it's nice. They've got you know these great vents down here. You just pull them. You get full ventilation through the cab. It would be nice if it had a sliding rear window, and I have one, but I just haven't committed myself to putting it in. And, and that's one of those deals. It's like, how far do I want to deviate from the originality of this pickup? Well, just driving it, listening. This truck is about as size. It feels like you're almost driving in a new truck. Yeah, and right now the odometer shows 72,318.7 miles, and it's never turned over. It's, I got it with 21,000 miles on it, and I drove it until it had about 40,000 miles on it. And then my grandmother drove it for quite a few years until I had a place where I could take it and, and uh, keep it. And I put the rest of the miles on, but it's never turned over 100,000. But am I going to hesitate to do so? Nope. It's not a, you know, it's not like it's a super, super rare high-end vehicle that I want to keep all the, you know, yeah, all the, the miles off of because of value. These square-body Chevys are becoming more valuable, but I don't view this pickup that way. Yeah, it's just the family friend. This is your old truck. Yeah, it's my pal. It really yeah. is, and I, what it is. and I feel so good in, in this. It, it, everything in it just takes me back to when I was 16, 17 years old. You know, well, if, that's uh, the thing with survivors. You get in those cars, and they bring you back to a time. If you're feeling down, you're feeling a little blue that day, you get in that vehicle, whatever it might be, whether it's your old truck, or I, I have the same feeling with my Corvette. And, right. you, and you get in it, and you take it for a drive, and almost immediately, Feel better. It's, it's one of those those driving experiences that just makes you feel good. And that's the one does. fun part about this hobby is, is, is you can do that and it does feel good to drive that. And now, if only it'd take me back far enough where there was no gray in my beard. <laughs> <laughs> they're Dang. not time. They're not that good at time machines. Oh yeah. I, you know, every single day you go. When the heck did I get this old? Yeah, well, how did this happen? Yeah, no, in the world. Yeah. And yet this thing, you know, is just as ageless as it can be. Sure, the paint's a little bit faded on the outside, and I can do something about that. Yeah. But it stays outdoors due to the fact that I have a one-car garage, which is occupied by the 70 Mach 1 Mustang I'm building. So, right now, Frank has to stay outside. Frank At some point, outside. yeah, lives outside. You know, it's, uh... One of these days, maybe I'll be able to build a bigger garage and do some cool stuff. But until then, it's going to have to stay outside. But days like this are so nice because the weather is perfect. It's been raining here, and you'll see the truck's not all that clean. It's been raining and snowing here for, what, the past month? But Roughly. it still looks great. That's the thing with this color is it's still oh. shiny. Even though it's a little faded, it's still shiny. Yeah. And, you know, that's the thing with survivors. You know, do you molest this and I think you, you would never do that. This is in such a good, good shape and there's no dents on this truck. You can see it's been very well taken care of uh, and it's still shiny. It's still, you see it driving down the road. You, you know, if you don't know, you wouldn't really notice that it's really that faded. You just go, oh, that's a clean old truck. And the funny thing is it has three dents in it. I didn't put any of them there. <laughs> they were all put there by other family members and I of course, raised hell every time I saw a new dent in it. What happened here? Yeah, what in the world? And, uh, but it's days like this, like we were saying, the weather. What's nice is to just get out and cruise the neighborhoods like this around my home and look for cars. You never know what you're going to run across. You might find the next beautiful survivor right in here. Yeah. So, you know, might be somebody's garage door is open that you've never seen open before. And there's the survivor there right there. Well, Even if it's not for sale, it's something you can at least stop and create a hey, friendship over. Yeah. Well, that's part of this show is, is, is everyday builders and survivors, and obviously we love survivors. Uh, and it could be just about anything. You know, if it's relatively old and it's really cool, whether it's an old station wagon or an old truck like this, and it's an original car, you just don't see those so much anymore. 
So those are the things we want to highlight. We want to put those on. We want to let people see these. That in these areas, especially out west here, where cars don't rust away, where everything kind of lasts a long time, you see a lot of these everyday drivers that are in really good shape. Cars and trucks that you can, you know, pick up sometimes relatively inexpensively and do very little work to. I mean, if if somebody were to pick up a truck in this shape, I mean, if you just put a coat of wax on this and put wheels and tires and maybe lowered it, you'd have a really cool vehicle. Yeah. And that's all you need to do with some of these. And that's the thing living out here in the West that, you know, we have that, you know, one advantage. And we don't get back east where cars just rust. We're, and we are. We're so fortunate to live here in the northern Nevada high desert because, sure, we get rain, we get snow, but they don't salt our roads badly. And really, we don't have the uh, the constant moisture creep that you have in coastal areas with the you know relative humidity here on an average day of you know, between 10 and if we're lucky 20 percent. You know, 10 percent humidity dries everything out relatively quick, so these things yeah. stay intact. You don't have the rust issues that you would have somewhere else. It's just and back, and back on the survivor issue too. I have a little different perspective of survivors than, than some people do. Some say they have to be 95% original, everything else. I think even a car that's had a repaint but still bears its original drivetrain and interior, as far as I'm concerned, that's a survivor. And you're going to see my friend Brian's 70 GTO later on in the season. Yes, it's had a repaint. It's had a couple of, um, how would you say, period correct, almost dealer type add-ons. But the car retains its original drivetrain, its very low miles, its original interior. I consider that car completely to be a survivor. And, and though we don't really know the story behind it, it's such a neat car, you could not feature it. Yeah. So look, you know, look for more of that kind of stuff. But used and driven is all that really matters. And I, I might be a little bit of a hypocrite when I say that, because I'm going to admit I don't drive this pickup as much as I used to simply because it means so much to me. Yeah. I don't want somebody T-boning it because they're driving around texting. And you see that every single day. Yeah, or the weather's bad with snow. The last thing you want is somebody driving off the road and smashing into you. Yeah. So, you know, I will we are lucky rain. though here because we have probably eight months worth, or more, eight to ten months probably, of good weather to drive nice. sunny weather cars. Yeah. So we, we are fortunate in that aspect. Absolutely. And I love driving these, you know, these back row roads like this. I try to stay off the freeway as much as I can when I'm in these vehicles just because it's, they were meant for two lane roads. That's what they were built for. So I just feel at home when when driving on these in these kind of vehicles. Now my, my newer pickup, my Dodge Diesel. Now I'll take it on a freeway anywhere, anytime. Sure. So, and I kind of have to deprogram myself from driving it because, you know, it's a big diesel motor. Six speed manual. I get in this thing. The first thing I do is go, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. I got to reach up here. <laughs> <laughs> and it, uh, you do. I have to just deprogram myself and kind of step back in time and go, oh, it's nice to drive an automatic. I'm kind of digging this. So, we hope you enjoyed this little yellow Chevy. You're going to see an awful lot more of these. In fact, you're going to see Gary's pickup, which is basically the sister truck to this, the 79 GMC, but a fully loaded big block truck. Yeah. Hi, guys. This is one of our next projects, 66 El Camino. We picked this up relatively inexpensive to work on with my son, who's going to be getting his license here soon. Uh, 66 El Camino. This car is an original V8 four-speed bucket seat car. It's actually pretty rare. Honduras maroon, black interior. Um, I'm not sure if we're going to go back to that, but you know we're going to get an engine in it, we're going to get wheels and tires on it, we're going to get it drivable, and then we'll do the body work and we'll decide to paint it here one of these days. So stay tuned and see how this turns out. Should be a lot of fun. Thanks for watching.
don't remember. Yeah. All right. Want to go to Wings or BJ's? Let's go to Wings. Oh, no, you know what? Let's go to BJ's. I haven't been in there in a long time. What the?